Ryan Little. <laughs>
it's like, this is so extensive. I don't even know where to start, but I like to come down here. I think this is the highlighted point right here. Um, so the SDR was like a reserve fund for all international or all countries in general. And what it was before, it was based on a basket of five currencies. So this is like the, everyone pulls in money into a basket and it allows you to, if your country gets hit with a hurricane or a, a tragic you know, event or something along those lines, a war, they allow you to pull from this fund to rebuild. Before, it was a basket of five currencies, the US dollar, the Euro, the Chinese renminbi, Japanese yen, and the British pound sterling. Okay. Um, when you go down here, it says that it initially was equivalent to 0.888671 grams of fine gold, which the US dollar was also pegged to at the time. As soon as it came off the gold standard, the dollar did, so did the SDRs reserve. So now they're trying to figure out, well, how do we balance all these currencies because they're not based on anything? So globally, they don't have something, a commodity that they can match this SDR fund with. There comes Ripple. You know, Ripple, if they can take this SDR and mint it, put it on Ripple's blockchain, which by the way, um, the World Economic Forum is 100% connected to this international monetary fund. Um, they, they're the ones who actually allocate and created it. So super interesting to me that we're now looking at Ripple, we're now looking at the SDR, and we're looking at um, World Economic Forum with Brad Garlinghouse all connected to them. So if you see, there's a lot of parallels to this right now that's really kind of mind blowing. Um, take it with a grain of salt. My personal reaction to it is, there is no way that this man is literally sitting on the World Economic Forum's YouTube as a thumbnail and the SEC is suing him and they think there's even a possibility that it won't come out in his favor. It's clearly like this is a show for him to be, this is how we now regulate crypto and we were the first ones to do it. So we get bypass rights to still act and move in a certain manner. So long story short, Ripple is not actually gonna lose this case and they're probably gonna blow up. I'm just being 100% honest with you. I'm invested in Ripple. I thought it was great from the jump. Um, knowing what I know about the SDR, um, this ISO and how they're all connected. Mm -mm -mm. I, hey, look, man, I'm, I can't tell anyone what to do. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just saying, grab you some Ripple. <laughs> I would highly encourage that. But once again, I'm not a financial advisor and do your own research. This is just something that I pulled together. Um, other than that, guys, that's it's a short video today. I just wanted to kind of explain that. And it might have been long winded, but if you don't follow it or if you don't understand it, I would just recommend spending some time on each one of the websites. Go to Ripple's website, look through it for a minute. Go to ISO 222, look through it for a minute, and then just literally pull up the World Economic Forum's YouTube videos. All the stuff is super conspiracy, like just nutball stuff, bro. Look at this. Davos agenda, preparing for deglobalization, uh, balanced cryptocurrency regulation. Why are you, cryptocurrency was made to not be regulated. How would you regulate cryptocurrency? Like this in itself just seems super like, like I said, conspiracy theory type of, the great reset, the same crazies that y'all point fingers at, I've always kind of had a feeling this was going on, but I'm just trying to figure out how we can still get our piece of the pie and get out and, and keep it moving. But yeah, there's too many videos about the great reset here in this. I, I don't, they're, they're giving me some sketchy vibes to say the least. But other than that guys, I appreciate you watching another video. We're gonna get back into some real educational content explore some more ecosystems, show some more opportunities of where you can make some money in crypto. Um, and that's that's what I'm here for. I'm here to continue to bring positivity into the marketplace, but also explain there are some pitfalls and there are some, uh, some, some people moving in different places that you should be aware of to make sure you protect your own investment. All right, guys, that's it for it.